Pletcher Kutcher 277, Batman Year One and Revisiting Darkseid. So this is the third week of January where I've been trying to consciously control the amount of gaming I do, separating it from the amount of art I do in terms of the way I ratio my time. Uh, this is what I was trying to do in October. It's still working, but it's it's still touch and go. So I reread um, Batman Year Run, written by Frank Miller and uh, illustrated by David Mazzuchelli, with a shout out to Richmond Lewis, who did the um, painted colors. Uh, the book was originally released in the 1980s, and this is the definitive by Batman reimagining of him as the dark and gritty guy that we take for granted today. Um, it's really the tale of two main characters, because Bruce Wayne and James Gordon, who will become the police commissioner, both arrive in the city at the same time. Bruce back from his travels, learning all his wonderful skills, and James uh, getting a transfer from... Chicago as a low-level police officer and it's really about Batman finding the costume fucking up a lot and getting away with it like in this page he like almost kills a guy by knocking him off of, of a banister uh, off a fire escape and has to actually hold on to the guy while the other dudes the other criminals are trying to kick him in the face um also of note is that James Gordon his second guess of who is Batman is Bruce Wayne and he goes to investigate, but doesn't try too hard. I think it's always an interesting dynamic that Gordon probably does know Bruce Wayne as Batman, but never really wants to ask too many questions. At the back of the book, with the extra content, because it's only four issues long, it's very good though, um, the artist David Mazzuchelli talks about this idea that superheroes should never be too realistic, because the more realistic they are, the more they don't stand up to reality. I kind of agree with that as an opinion, he does a pretty good job of explaining his point. Another thing that really is worth pointing out is this is a very old book and it's coloured fantastically. Uh, much better than Maximum Carnage that I spoke about recently, because the, the colourer has an idea of colour theory and light temperature. A lot of the scenes in this book, there's lighting. Maximum Carnage has none of that. And then right at the very end, you've got Frank Miller's script and David Mazzuchelli's um, kind of working rough pencils. And just, I love this stuff in a trade paperback when they show you the behind the scenes stuff. Because it's like, well, here, here's, you know, how you build these things up. You can take that stuff and say, hey, I'm going to do my own. And we could certainly do some more Batman books that are good. Always. Um so after reading year one, I was just like, well, let's just draw some Batman. Um, you know, for all the Batman I draw, I've never really figured out how to draw Batman. Um, but this week has really been about, let's try and plant people on ground. So really, it's just about the pose. Uh, I bothered putting in a background um, and colouring it just, just to keep my hands moving. Really, the January is just a bit about this idea of, let's consciously not be a gamer. Let's do stuff but the stuff I do isn't really important which is why I'm staying away from the book it's about jumping on whims as I have them and taking them as far as I take them bef before it becomes work I don't want to do and speaking of that the Tuesday Bisons I was like this week let's draw around Bison let's put him on the ground let's give him a pose it's kind of based on a Street Fighter 2 pose I'm not too bothered about what's going on it's really just about do I feel like he's he's there in the space with his weight balanced on those legs? Uh, I don't know about the hairline. And yeah, he's kind of got an old man face. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a case of I'm listening to podcasts. I draw until I feel like stopping and I'm just trying to stay off the PlayStation. I also uh, saw an old picture of like a digital sketch sketchbook version of a couple of the turtles I did. And I was like, well, let's just draw another layer. Let's get more comfortable working with the Cintiq as a Wacom tablet, which I've been mostly doing for the last couple of weeks. Um, I've also been watching Japanese Spider-Man because it's awesome, but I feel like it's escalating in violence. And no sooner did I think this than Spider-Man grabbed a machine gun and started shooting the place up. <laughs> this show is its everything I could ever hope a show could be now, but they made this in the 70s. It's, it's bananas. Uh, so this is an old airbrushed picture I did of Darkseid, the DC villain, who has the strangest shaped head, uh, originally created by Frank Kirby. He just has this way of getting away with these things that no one else can manage. 
Uh, so I thought, you know, I haven't done that much airbrushing recently. I want to screw around with the, the blur tool. And, you know, so I kind of just blurred out what I had. And it's like, let's just move the gray around. Let's try and make it more stable. And let's try and make it better lit. And then let's try and make it look a bit more like an aesthetically pleasing dark side, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, and I think it does have a, a stronger form. And then, of course, the trick with digital art is always special effects. You know, you can cover a lot of poor work by tarting it up, as as you would say. Um, and I'm happy enough with the work I put in for the result I got out. It's still very difficult to draw, and it's not like I'm, I'm a, an accurate kind of guy. So here's the grayscale comparison of both of them, and I think you'll find on the right, you know, I put more time in, I put put more effort in, and I got got a better result. It's still not, you know, he's supposed to have like a granite face, and it's like I didn't commit to that completely as an idea. But yeah, step in the right direction, that's always a good thing. So Smiley Saturday, I was uh, doing uh, more detailed uh, re-illustration of the first page, re-penciling, if you will. Also adding the uh, graphic elements like the, the panels and the... Um, the narration boxes. Trying to figure out the establishing shots was exhausting. I left the Batcave in the middle and then I moved on to the Michael Keaton joke I was making. Which I don't... You know, the thing with this smiley show I'm doing, I'm not sure it's even... The jokes are even funny. That's not the point. This is me slowly trying to trick myself back into doing stuff that I can put back on the internet and actually start building, you know, a library of content. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, having had online presence for four years. Um, but I still think taking this month off, using the new year as an excuse to build a new type of habit of thinking about the way I do work, I think it's it's helping, it's working. I'm redeeming myself for kind of tapping out through Inktober, and uh, I fully intend to do this again next week. So uh, that's the end of Pecha Kucha 277, and I will see you then. <laughs>